Oh, merciful Savior, it is our privilege and delight to be in your presence and to bring our praises and worship to you. You are our teacher and our friend, our rock and our hope and our strength and our light. We celebrate your arrival in Jerusalem. We anticipate the agony that is before you and we await your victory over death. Grant that we may walk this journey alongside you as faithful disciples, rather than as participants of a fickle crowd. This we pray in Christ's name. Amen. We welcome those of you who are joining us online today for our Palm Sunday worship service. Are there any announcements that you would like to share? I just want to announce that the guided prayer walk will begin today after worship. Uh, I'll be setting up a few chairs, but after that, uh, what the guided prayer walk includes is a guide that will be by the front door in a plastic box, and you will go to four stations that are numbered on the church grounds, beginning in the woods in the back, and you just follow, it's got a, a, a reflection for each station, and you're invited to participate in that. And if this is your sacred pathway of contemplation, this is right up your alley. <laughs> so I'm excited about that. If you are bringing flowers on your own to church for Easter next Sunday, please call us this week to let us know who they are in honor of or in memory of. And if you've already pre-ordered flowers, we already have that information from you. Thursday, our Monday Thursday service at 7 p.m., we will have a hand-washing ceremony and celebrate communion together on this Last Supper of Jesus life here on earth. Um, Good Friday, the church will be open from 12 till 3 for a prayer vigil. We'll have music playing in the background. You are welcome to come and go as you contemplate this day and its meaning in your life. In the Milford United Methodist Church, they have a one o'clock worship service for Good Friday, which you are also welcome to be a part of. Easter Sunday, start eight o'clock in the morning with an Easter breakfast sponsored by the United Methodist Men. And as we celebrate Easter next Sunday, there'll be a lot of music. We're going to have cantata by congregation and a visit uh, from Jesus and Mary in the garden. Yes, Carrie. I should have said during the joys that Bob and Shirley Nash are celebrating their 67th anniversary. Wow, congratulations, Bob and Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if you would like to be a part of the Palm Sunday procession, during our centering time, while Jerry's playing, please meet me in the lobby, bring your palms, and we are going to have a procession around the sanctuary. All right.
Hosanna. Go ahead, Terry. expectations on Palm Sunday. Our one minister, Reverend William Ritter, would always jump on top of the piano as our black organist hit the ivories and he would wave his palm branches. <laughs> you to stand as you're able for the call to worship. <laughs> On Palm Sunday, Jesus entered the holy city of Jerusalem. The crowds cheered and they cried out, Hosanna to the Son of David! Jesus rode upon a donkey. The crowds spread their garments and palms before him, cheering, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! When the leaders asked, who is this, the crowd said, This is the prophet, Jesus of Nazareth, from Galilee. And now we will sing praise be to Jesus. Well, we will now have the scriptures. <laughs> we are going to have the first reading from Psalm 30, chapter 31, verses 9 through 16. Have mercy on me, Lord, because I'm depressed. My vision fails because of my grief, as do my spirit and my body. My life is consumed with sadness. My years are consumed with groaning. Strength fails me because of my suffering. My bones dry up. I'm a joke to all my enemies, still worse to my neighbors. 
I scare my friends, and whoever sees me in the street runs away. I am forgotten like I'm dead, completely out of mind. I am like a piece of pottery destroyed. Yes, I've heard all the gossiping, <laughs> um, terror all around. So many gang up together against me. They plan to take my life. But me, I trust you, Lord. I affirm you are my God. My future is in your hands. Don't hand me over to my enemies, to all who are out to get me. Shine your face on your servant. Save me by your faithful love. Amen. And then we continue with the reading from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 8. By his divine power, the Lord has given us everything we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of the one who called us by his own honor and glory. Through his honor and glory, he has given us his precious and wonderful promises that you may share the divine nature and escape from the world's immortality that sinful craving produces. This is why you must make every effort to add moral excellence to your faith. Are you ready? And to moral excellence, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, endurance, and to endurance, godliness, and to godliness, affection for others, and to affection for others, love. If all these are yours and they are growing in you, they'll keep you from becoming inactive and unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we'll stand and sing, Tell Me the Stories of Jesus. Jerusalem. The, its master needs it. Those who had been sent found it exactly as he said. As they were untying the colt, its owners said to them, why are you untying the colt? They replied, its master needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their clothes on the colt, and lifted Jesus onto it. As Jesus rode along, they spread their clothes on the road. As Jesus approached the road leading down from the Mount of Olives, 
the whole throng of his disciples began rejoicing. They praised God with a loud voice because of all the mighty things they had seen. They said, blessings on the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heavens. Some of the Pharisees from the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, scold your disciples. Tell them to stop. He answered, I tell you, if they were silent, the stones would shout. As Jesus came to the city and observed it, he wept over it. He said, if only you knew on this day of all days the things that lead to peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. <clears throat> I'd like to point out some old Jerusalem geography for you. I won't, it won't be a long lesson, just in case you don't like geography lessons, but it's just a little bit here. The old city of Jerusalem is outlined in red. You can see kind of on the left with Mount Zion or the Temple Mount in the northeast corner. The yellow indicates the Kidron Valley outside the city. The Garden of Gethsemane was in that valley in the yellow. The next mountain to the northeast, over there a ways, was called the Mount of Olives, which was covered in ancient olive trees. Now, Gethsemane comes from the Hebrew word for press and oil. It was a place where they pressed the olives to extract the oil. And this is dramatic because Jesus often went to this place to pray, including the night of his arrest when he prayed in agony. And it's almost as if the healing oil of our salvation comes from the pressure that was put upon his life that night and from his deep connection with God. Now you know what Gethsemane is through the map and what Gethsemane means. So where is your Gethsemane? We posed that question last month and explained that Jesus had a favorite place of prayer, a special place to connect with God. And we began to speak of the nine different pathways by which we connect with God. ...program today, so you can see the nine sacred pathways with a brief description of each one. And we've introduced them in this Lenten series and some of you have identified the one sacred pathway that helps you the most. One another, and I've learned from you, and the connections that we make with one another in a small group like that is just truly a blessing. So we've asked, where is your guest Gethsemane? Meaning, what blend of the sacred pathways intensifies your connection with God? How does your spiritual garden grow? If you're passionate about gardening, you probably have some seeds on hand now, ready for spring planting. Maybe you've started to sow some seeds indoors, or you soon will. In gardening, maybe you talk to others about it. You might experience, experiment with new varieties, or and improve your garden year by year. If you're passionate about gardening, you might have grown up with it. You might have even, wanted, if you've never tended a garden, you might slink away when two gardeners start discussing their latest miracle crop or the most amazing flower they've ever grown. <laughs> now, it doesn't really matter if you're 
people connect with God using a different pathway. He wrote this series in three ways. All, some, and one. All means learn about all nine so that you can accept that other people will connect with God in different ways. Don't judge them through serving or the art. Learning about all nine might expand our own practice and help us to connect to God in new ways. Then, out of the nine, pick some. Some of your own blend. Which three path read in 2 Peter chapter 1? That's all that we need for life and godliness. In the Greek word there, for life, it, it's zoe. The Greek word for life in this passage is zoe, which is the abundance of putting your faith, your trust Savior. That's like planting the seed of the gospel in your life. Then I invite you to use these pathways to help you keep growing in Christ. It's like watering your garden. Gary Thomas tells and brought his family to see the farm. He wanted them to taste that water. He was surprised that the well looked like it was unused, and when he opened it up, it was dry as a bone. And he asked the new owner what happened, and he said, well, in this part of the country, these old wells are fed by hundreds of small rivulets of flowing gift from God. So with these gifts that God has given to us, we want to keep them active and flowing like those rivulets, little rivers of God's zone. Funeral service is a tribute to Tim. It's a poem that he has written, and I heard it there, and I asked if he would please share that with us today. So Richard, would you please come and share the poem? And I think when he reads it, you'll understand. I asked him to share it with us today when we are. Want to bring another to my garden. Fill up the banquet hall, for there is more room. Won't you plant the seed for my garden today? Thank you so much, Richard. And let your word live and abide in us, as Jesus taught us. This week, as we remember Jesus' lonely, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In the Apostle
after our business of a loving God who is with us always, even as we travel our own roads to Jerusalem. Amen. Amen.